I'm Nadine Forsler and welcome to another How To with Choco Paint. Today I'm going to show you how to make over the kitchen in your house. Something that can cost a fortune can now be made over in a very cost effective way and it still can be the feature in your house. I'm going to show you step by step how to follow this process. First of all, you need to clean your kitchen cupboards well. This is key to success for everything else that's going to happen. I'm going to show you how to clean and prepare your kitchen surface. And we also have a stunning how-to cleaning guide that you can refer to for this step. I'm putting on my gloves. We are going to work with a chemical. No sanding, no priming is required, but we do want to make sure that we remove any grime, grease, oiliness on our kitchen surfaces. I use my lacquer thinners. I pour it in an old bucket or container. To clean my surface, I'm going to use a piece of scotch pad or a rag, and I'm thoroughly going to emerge this in my thinners and wash off my surface. I'll be doing this more than once to make sure that the surface is completely clean and what the thinnest does, it also edges the surface so that chalko can adhere to the melamine that we're painting on. Very important is to make sure that the thinnest has evaporated completely. And next important step is to make sure that the surface that you're painting on is solid, in good condition. Paint won't fix cracks or imperfections. So your surface is the foundation for your paint that will be applied. So make sure it is in good condition. Now the transition process can happen. Something very important before you start cleaning, remember to remove your hardware, something that I've already done and also before you start painting. A question we often get asked is, should I paint my kitchen cupboards with the doors still being in place or should I remove them? It's completely up to you and up to the space you have available. If you do want to remove your doors, important, number the doors and the hinges to make sure that everything gets put back in the right positions afterwards. Depending on the size of your surface, you can work with different paint equipment. Small to medium sized surfaces, foam roller works like a charm if you work with it correctly. I'll show you how to work with it. Larger flat surfaces, a mohair roller is your best tool to use. If you work with a foam roller on large flat areas, you might tend to press too hard and overwork the foam roller and that's when you will create a rough surface and lines on your surface. It's not the paint that causes it, it's the application and the tool. I'm going to start with cut lines. Cut lines are the areas where your roller can't reach and it's like coloring in a picture. You first do your cut lines and then you fill the gaps in the center. I'm going to decant my paint in a paint tray. There are a few things that contaminate paint, air being one of them. So I'm just going to decant as I need, close my bottle for later use again, dip my clean, dry paintbrush in my paint and start painting cut lines. Masking tape can be used on areas where you don't want any paint to reach. The colour I'm working with, and I'm loving it, is called Savvy Steffi. Now this colour has a person that it's named after, and that's part of our ethos, is work creation and empowerment. Colour is a personal choice. You can use any colour that makes you happy. And with Choco, we have such a vast variety, from classical to modern and everything in between. To find your perfect colour, visit our website for tons of inspiration. 
I have used my cut line or I have moved with my brush to create a cut line vertically over here and horizontally over there just because that's the shape of the surface I'm working on. Next I'll be using my foam roller. So important with a foam roller is to make sure that you distribute the paint evenly everywhere on the roller. To make sure that the paint is evenly distributed, I'm using this section on my paint tray. Just roll it over to make sure that there's not too much or too little paint on my roller. So this actually is a nice balance between not too much and not too little. I'm going to start rolling so that you can see the effect I get on the surface. Air bubbles appear and this is common. This should happen when working with a foam roller. It's the air inside the foam that's being transmitted onto your surface. How do I get rid of these bubbles? I press lightly over my surface, no hard pressure, because that's when you will get roughness on your surface and you remove it. I'm not pressing too hard with my roller. I'm not overworking it in one area. If I find that my roller gets dry, I add more paint, no aggression. Now that my paintwork is complete and I have allowed for the paint to cure for at least four hours. When the weather is cold, humid or at coastal areas, we do recommend to wait overnight before we are going to continue to the next step. Next, we are going to apply our clear glaze. And what the clear glaze does, it adds extra protection in a kitchen. Just to make the surface more hard wearing, more stain resistant, and it also adds a subtle sheen to your surface. You can also go to our glaze video where we share extra tips and ideas on the glaze application. How I'm going to do it on this surface is I'm going to, in a bowl, add one part cooled boiled water. Tap water contaminates paint products, so if you have any left over, you can store in an airtight container to use again later. In my mixing bowl, I'm going to add three parts glaze. So I've already added one part water. On darker surfaces, we do recommend to add one part glaze with one part cooled boiled water. I'm using a microfiber cloth. First step, dip this cloth in some cooled boiled water. Squeeze out excess moisture. This just helps with the even distribution of your glaze and water mix on this cloth. I next dip my damp microfiber cloth in my glaze and water mix. Make sure it absorbs the mixture everywhere. I squeeze out excess moisture, but I also allow for my cloth to be rather too damp than too dry. I fold it like a ball in the palm of my hand, press it flat, and now in a well-lit space, I'm evenly going to wipe my glaze onto my painted surface. The nice thing about the glaze, due to the fact that it is water-based, at any stage, if you want to change the color of your cupboards, you can just paint over the glaze again. It gives a beautiful, subtle satin finish to your surface. And if you want to, you can also add a second coat. Wait at least 30 minutes. If you see any streakiness on your surface, that's when the application didn't happen evenly. So then you can just simply wait at least half an hour and just do the application again. Next and last step is just to add new hardware and in an instance, in a very cost effective way, you have a brand new kitchen. And this is also empowering because you have done it yourself. I hope that you have enjoyed. Please like, subscribe and turn on those notifications. And remember, don't paint it, choco it.